I began to read the Holy Fathers while I was in college studying for the Anglican priesthood. And I realised that there was a deeper expression of being Christian. And that's what led me to orthodoxy. And it was the worship. I began to attend the... Firstly, I attended the um, Syriac uh, uh, services with the Bunaskaria of the Indian Church. I would go and pray with him once, twice a week for the years I was in college as an Anglican seminarian. But I, I, I just, something about that man was heavenly. I just loved to be in his presence. But then coming to worship was what did it for me. So that worship is not entertainment. It's not emotion. It's deeper than all of that. It's allowing a sacred space in which the soul can see Christ. So it's the Orthodox worship that brought me here. It's the liturgy, actually. That's a very Orthodox answer, but that's the truth. It's the liturgy. It is the liturgical life of the Church which brought me to Orthodoxy. And I had to jump a huge, which I'm still jumping, cultural barrier to get in. But here I am. And I never intended to be an Orthodox priest. I had no intention at all. In fact, when I left the Anglican ministry, I thought, well, that's the end of that. And a few years later, the Serbian bishop just announced by my godfather, who is a Greek priest, well, he's going to ordain you next week. He said, well, he didn't ask me. I don't know what that's about. Well, it's Orthodox. Your father, get used to it. It hasn't changed. Yeah. So there you are. That's it. It's the life of mystery. And, and without being... I have to be nice tonight. Without being too negative about other forms of Christianity, we have to say this. that worship is not about emotion. It's not about entertainment. It's not about feeling good. It's about coming close to Christ with your heart, beyond feeling. The Greek fathers are very big on this, on passionlessness. On moving beyond your feelings and emotions into a deep, quiet space where the Spirit of God can talk to you. Now, the biggest problem we have today are distractions. We are constantly distracted from meditating on Christ. Whether it be the, those things and this phone thing. Bishop Suriel gave me a present for my ordination. Not ordination, I was already a priest. What did he do? He did something to me. He said, welcome, that's it. He said, here I am. Well, what's that? He said, it's a phone. Well, what am I going to do with that? He said, for your father. <laughs> I said, your grace, I have spent 17 years in the Serbian church living without that thing. You need it. I said, I don't need it. He said, yes, you do. I said, why? I said, because I want to call you. <laughs> Orthodox Episcopacy 101. Yes, say it now. <laughs> and he's never rung me on it. I've got a sense of humour. But the point is distractions. St. John of Kronstadt, the greatest Russian saint, said the people of the last days will only have one problem, distractions. Distractions. I'm such a fanatic. I even hate screens in church. Oh, I hate them. I hate television. If they sit at our church, we need to put up television screens. I said, what do you want to do? Watch the midday movie? <laughs> no, we need to worship. We need to have a screen. I said, what, do people bow and pray to a neon god? What's that about? Well, we don't know the words of the service. If you come to church every week of your life, you still don't know it? Learn it. Oh, no, but what if we don't know? I said, say, Kyrie Eleison. <laughs> What's your problem? I'm serious. Now, I haven't come to sit here to tell you off about your screens. <laughs> it's the soul. We're trying to move beyond the rational into the spiritual. We're trying to baptise our thinking mechanism with spiritual practice. And I mean it. One Kyrie Eleison said from the heart, is of more value than anything. It's so important that attitude of worshipfulness and of adoration is so important because that's the point at which, beyond words, God speaks to our heart as deep calls to deep in the roar of many waters, as the psalmist says. It's at that point where conversion of heart happens. But we've got to get rid of distractions. We've got to unplug tune out and tune into Jesus. So all this thing, but God help us if microphone, if mobile phones go off in the church when I'm doing liturgy, look at it. <laughs> I get quite cranky about it. The church should be a silent place 
an oasis of contemplation and of prayerfulness. That's why I cracked it with you when I came in tonight and said, what do you all do? Talk like a supermarket. This is God's house. This is God's house. Now, if Moses can say, or if God can say to Moses of the burning bush, take off your, your shoes for the ground on which you stand is holy ground, how much more this is? This is the very gate of heaven. Does not God feast us here with his sacred body and blood? Now that's an evangelical tool for the world. Teach people the beauty of quietness. The people of the world are even more distracted than we are, if that were possible. We are terribly distracted, believe you me. But the people of the world are even more distracted. In fact, they're addicted to distractions. But one thing I'll tell you is this. Whenever people have come to me over the years, as they occasionally do, and ask about orthodoxy, the first lesson I give them is come with me to the church. Take off your shoes. Come with me to the church. And don't ask any questions. Don't say a word, in fact. Just come and bow and kiss the icon if you can bring yourself to do it. And smell the oil of the lamps burning in front of the icon and the candles. Smell the fragrance of the incense. And enter into the silence of the Lord. And I can tell you without fail, every person that I've bought, only a few, come to orthodoxy through that way find something so precious in our faith we have icons not just for nice pictures but Basil says that the honour we pay to the icon passes to the one represented and a very saintly spiritual father at our Serbian monastery, Father Jovan who's now gone to God and every night he was a monk he would waken around midnight 1am to go down to the church to make sure the Kandili was still burning in front of the icon of the Mother of God. And he would say, I'm going to kiss Mother goodnight. What a beautiful, saintly man. He would take an hour before liturgy just commemorating people's names before he even began the Mass. I've seen great saints, I'm grateful for that, whose sandals I'm totally unworthy even to touch, let alone undo. When you see that degree of holiness, you know there's something other here in orthodoxy. Something wonderful. When I was in Egypt, I was very blessed to be able to go to the Baramus Monastery and to be taken into the cell of a dying monk. And I don't know what happened in here, but something happened in my heart. Such silence, such peacefulness, such reality, capital R reality. I found it also in the beautiful cave church of St. Paul of Thebes, out of the monastery when Father Agathon, now Bishop Agathon, was there. These are precious things we have in our Orthodox faith. These are not cultural artefacts. These are laboratories of the Spirit. Laboratories of the Spirit. Whose unworthy inherit as we are as Orthodox Christians. That's the precious gift of Christ we bring to others. Amen. That's it. No more talk. <laughs> <laughs> no. No.